Well, hello there. Welcome to Prop Live, your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session. I'm Bill, and this week we have another guest. We've had a lot of guests lately because our uh, our worker Paige has been <laughs> wrangling everybody. We have Jordan yep. with us. Hey, Jordan. It has been a while, buddy. It has. Nice to be here. I'm excited to catch up, though. Yes, definitely. This is my this is my real trick. I do this show so that I can stay up to date with my friends who are we are all. <laughs> Way too busy to hang out, so we'll just we'll just have you on the show every every year to <laughs> get yeah, caught up. That's what it's, I think it's been every year so far, once a year. Yep. Uh, of course, Jordan runs Henchman Studios, a really fantastic company. You guys are up in Toronto. Yes, Toronto, yeah. Ontario. You guys have been making some really bonkers stuff lately. A lot of stuff for Blizzard, some stuff for some Destiny stuff. I know that. Uh, a lot of our, uh, a lot of myself included, and a lot of our fans, yeah. done a lot of are big fans of Destiny. Um, what have you been excited about making in the last, I don't know, six months or oh. so? <laughs> Gosh, well, what six months ago? So that was just before BlizzCon, and and we did Moira for that. Oh, that's right. Um, so that was a, you know another big one for us, and and a lot of fun. And we had um, a couple actually projects at BlizzCon. Um, but it's it's funny, you know, you know the life of uh, can't. It's like the past three months. There's not really anything we can talk about. <laughs> that's um, why. That's why I was asking what you've made in yeah. the last year. <laughs> <'Cause>, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, I did see. So we were at BlizzCon, and among many other things, I saw your Doomfist, which was on display, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, yeah. We actually that was really cool to see. So we because we had made two. Um, two Doomfist costumes originally. One went down to San Diego, one went to uh, Australia, and they were there at the same time. But when we did the... They, so they had one on display at, at BlizzCon, and then the other one being worn by uh, one of our awesome models. So it was definitely cool to see. And they actually ended up... Um, I know they had that on display on the Blizzard campus for a while as well. Um, That's which so cool. I happened, happened to be down there uh, for a visit. A couple of weeks ago, or a month or two ago now, but yeah. got to see that. It's mind-blowing. Now, why on earth would you be down at Blizzard? I wonder. I'm sure you so, can't talk about it, but... Actually, this is one of the projects that um, has come out. Oh. So, uh, if you're an Overwatch fan, you may have seen a live stream a couple of months ago involving uh, 12 puppies. <laughs> um, so we actually did, and uh, this all came out um, last month. So we did 12 Overwatch themed puppy costumes um, for for an Overwatch puppy brawl that was uh, they were working with a bunch of uh, shelters and you know promoting um, uh, adopting you know older dogs and, and all that good stuff. So we I yeah I legitimately had to uh, travel to LA to put costumes on puppies. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what like I. Uh, I'm trying to find the video of it. I can't find it right now. But uh, what in, in what fantasy would you even imagine that being a thing you did for your job? <laughs> I never could have believed it. And, and even it was a last minute ask. Um, so the production company that was coordinating everything, just you, you know, when when you have that many moving pieces on a project, it's just you just want someone to take care of things so you don't have to worry about them. Um, so last minute they asked if we could we could do that and. And we, uh, yeah, had a, had some good fun with that. That's it was pretty adorable. That's Definitely ridiculous. The, the cutest models we've worked with for sure. <laughs> that is really really cool. Um, well, I count myself lucky. I've got a chance to see a bunch of your stuff up close. Actually, just over or under a year ago, we were at PAX East. And I got to uh, see the stuff you made for Lawbreakers, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, funny too, the gun you made. I technically made the same gun, technically, okay. for the commercial. Yes. But all I made was a very basic stunt version that they CG'd over. Yep. So the thing yep. I made was I was done in an hour, really, really fast, with markers on it. Um, but I'm familiar with that gun. Yeah, because I remember um, watching that video um, with Frank and Tested and you down there working on those. I remember seeing that when it first came out, and then 
whatever a year later when we were working on those went back and referenced it yeah. and then I made that connection is yeah. we had a little more time yeah yeah <laughs> the uh the funny thing um the thing i made i was most proud of for that that commercial that never shows up on screen was it the the pistol yeah <laughs> yeah that was really cool it looked really yeah. good yeah. oh well i got paid that's fine and I hope you got good photos. I got lots of pictures. That's yeah, that's what counts. I may have got a casting of it too. I don't know. Might oh, have. that's that's even better. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be on the shelf unpainted for the next five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three, uh, three. You've been you've been charting through a lot of casts. I have. Yeah, I finished. Couple months. I finished my um my M5 Phalanx pistol, which I made six and a half years ago. It's finally painted. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's i still have actually um a raw cast uh of one of your mass effect guns on <laughs> on my shelf yeah. above my desk that still needs to be painted so i am also guilty of of being slow sometimes yeah it's okay that is the life the life we live uh something else i've got here overwatch did a really cool video on you called jordan duncan's hero story <laughs> that was really cool it, it, it's even even now hard to put into words, but just can't, yeah, can't even understand it to this day. You know, um, what I find is really cool though is that um, a, a lot of us in this community who have kind of grown up and, and started businesses and kind of carved out our, out our own section of the, the this niche. Um, have grown to the point where you're hiring people. So we talked to Harrison a couple of weeks ago. You've got a whole team of people now. And yeah. and with that team, you're able to do things, just, just incredible things that you could never do by yourself. It's so true. Um, and like, like we, ever, you know, we have such a diverse team and, and from such a wide range of skill sets and backgrounds, people from, you know, construction to film sets and, and, you know, our seamstresses, you know, all, all different fields it's crazy to see the, even the stuff we're doing now and the timelines and everything it's it's bonkers yeah from, you know from i guess what looking at this now from three years ago i never would have imagined yeah it's uh it's kind of nuts too there are jobs you could probably you probably had to turn down uh, a couple of years ago that you couldn't do just because you didn't couldn't do it by yourself and now you're like yes let's do this you know what um I can't say there is because I think I think one um, what one catalyst to kind of I guess the opportunities we've had and the growth we growth we've had um, is I'm the type of person who will say yes yeah. and then figure out how. <laughs> so even the, kind of our first couple um, real bigger industry projects where we were mul making multiple costumes, we had our first two at the exact same time, so we were making a total of I think. 18 costumes in oh, a span man. of two months um and and but immediately i was like yeah we can do this and then i you know phone up all my friends and, yeah and it literally had um a few friends living with me you know just from uh, the lived half an hour away but just because of how much work we were doing they were living with me for um you know a good month and a half while we were working out of back then when we were still you know in the basement um yeah so we just found a way yep yep life finds a way that's really cool well, it's been very exciting for us to watch uh from our vantage point um let me see there was one more video i wanted to pop up here you did a year in review video that was pretty cool to just <laughs> see um i like doing these things too or just go back on the, a year and see the grand sum of things that you've accomplished in a year. I don't know about you, but in the, in the sort of uh, clutter of just constantly having things to work on, you tend to forget all the stuff that you've accomplished. And uh, so true. this is quite a highlight reel that you've got stuff from Warframe. And uh, I don't even know what that's from, but that yeah. that's really cool. So good on you. And your awesome team. <laughs> yeah, it's. I honestly can't say enough about about the you know the team we have and the people we work with. You know, we all work together. Um, it, it's one one the fact that you know so many talented creative people under one roof is 
is awesome, but just in terms of the camaraderie and how well everyone works together, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of stress too, as everything always is. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, fantastic. Um, everything we've been chatting about, all the cool videos uh, of you guys watching at home, we will link to all these in the show notes. But you can also go to uh, Henchman Studios on YouTube, and uh, whoop, yeah. You got a YouTube page with a whole bunch of really cool videos and, and project recaps. So, again, we'll link to all that stuff down in the show notes so you guys can go grab those and watch to your heart's content, which you should. <laughs> uh, what else do we have here? A couple more things before we get rolling. Um, I always want to point out the Prop Tarts Facebook group, which is always really, really fun with lots of fun projects that people are working on. So if you have something you're asking, you want to ask questions on, or you want to get feedback on, um, look up the prop tarts of Punished Props on Facebook, and you can go, whoop, you can go check that out. It's a really wonderful group. Um, just showing some of the stuff right here on the page. Uh, a huge, wide range of stuff that people are working on. For example, Jonathan's got a video linked here talking about modeling for the human body in Fusion 360, which is really interesting. That sounds like a video I'd like to go watch. <laughs> uh, and then, let's see, what else do we have before we're going to take some questions? And again, if you're watching live, punishprops.com slash live to ask your questions. Um, the only thing I really want to talk about is that I got to do something really cool in San Francisco a couple weeks ago, and that video just came out. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch it. I saw the saw some of the photos on Instagram. But I'm excited to hear more. Yeah, this is cool. So um, our pal Frank Ippolito, who's been on the show a couple times, uh, used to do a whole bunch of stuff with Tested. But his company's grown so much, uh, he just moved into a 10,000 square foot space in L.A. So he is stepping back from doing stuff on Tested. And they reached out to me and said, hey, Bill, do you want to come out every once in a while and film some stuff uh, with us? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. So, I am now a regular contributor on Tested, and when I flew out there last month, I got to build something with Adam Savage, which was wicked cool. Yeah, that's a pretty incredible. It's definitely a bucket list. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, if you want, if you guys want to um, go watch that video, you can head over to Tested.com. It'll be over there. Um, and just watch as I constantly try and keep my act together while I build something next to one mm -hmm, of my heroes. Mm -hmm. So... Cool. Uh, and the thing we built are foam gauntlets. I got mine right here. Oops, sorry. From uh, Lord of the Rings. So, whoop. Let me swap the video over so you guys can actually see. So we made a foam ring wraith or Nazgul gauntlet. And then I did a video on my channel where we painted them. Or I painted them, which was really cool. So that was super fun. Beautiful. Really cool project. Um, I'll be flying out there to do more stuff with them regularly. And... Uh, so look forward to more stuff from Tested and me. Um, that's all I want to talk about that. Let's go dive into some questions. You ready for questions, Jordan? For sure. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to take a sip of coffee that's now 10 hours old. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll dive right in. Let's see here. There it is. Okay. Habiteer Workshop, our pal is uh has a question about a harness um and he's specifically referencing the sort of chest harness area you made for moira um he's really just uh curious about how did you make it there we go um well i guess from the start when we were looking at the moira design the biggest challenge almost or one of the bigger challenges with that costume was um how bat heavy the character was. Yeah. Um, so she has this big backpack with, you know, different tanks and tubing. Um, and, and it's basically, you know, three quarters of her costume is on her back. So really it came from just wanting to figure out the best way to, um, distribute that weight and, and make things as comfortable and, um, I, yeah, just as comfortable and e easy to wear as possible. I've got uh, I've got the video up on screen right now, so it looks like you've got a f sort of chest plate and back plate that are strapped pretty tight to your your model. 
And then you just strap a whole crap load of, uh, of tubes and stuff to her back. <laughs> yeah. So what we actually did from there, and we ended up trimming down, uh, you can see that line actually uh, just almost follows the rib cage. So we ended up trimming that up, you know, for a little more mobility. But we basically had, um, you know, uh, did, did uh, quick uh, alginate casts of her back and, and front of her torso. And then from that, you know, made bucks that we could then vacuum form. So we vacuum formed these pieces that would fit, you know, very close to her body uh, and then, re you know, fiberglass those for reinforcement. But those were also – so not only was that the front and back harness you saw, um, but that, that was later also, uh, you know, created – uh, or we attached a light harness that went around um, her hips and legs to also anchor that, um, you know, down, uh, really distributing the weight throughout her whole body. Um, but it was really, you know, trying to make that thing as easy to wear as possible, which there's all, only so much you can do. And, and our model Libby was amazing. So definitely made it easier for us. Very good. Um, I imagine there was probably a little bit of trial and error, too, to get the fit and everything just right. It's, um, most Always. of the time, whenever I'm trying to fit something to a torso, uh, especially if it's not mine, um, you you try it, you try it on, and then you're like, okay, what's not comfortable? How can we we update this to to make it more comfortable? That's why you you generally don't want to leave those those parts for last. <laughs> <laughs> Painting, la you can. There's a lot of fudging you can do with paint, but when it comes to comfort, especially if it's anything on the neck or head or back or shoulders. You want to make sure that the people wearing it are going to be comfortable, especially if it's yourself. <laughs> yeah, and even with a, a life cast, though, the you know you think a life cast is a one-to-one, -one, uh, obviously recreation of someone's you know body, but when when you do a life cast, you're getting one specific pose, which you know isn't going to translate into you know ninety percent of the time it's not going to fit as it did in that you know yeah. one moment. So even with having that form fitting, we obviously, you know, or we had a little padding in there just to account for, for that and really keep things as, as light and comfy as possible. Very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Habiteer Workshop. Christian has a question about molding and casting. Curious if we ever run or host casting and molding workshops. I have personally never done that. Have you ever done anything like that, Jordan? We've thought about it, but no, never really had the opportunity. Or to, mm -hmm. oh, you know what? I lied. Ah. Um, two years ago, or maybe last year, I think it was. Uh, the, uh, there's a small uh, local um, prop expo. I think it's literally called the Toronto Prop Expo. Um, don't quote me on that, but something like that. But it's awesome. There's it's pretty much just all makers. Um, at least when I, you know the past two years when I've been there, they just you just say you want to go, you just show up, throw your stuff on a table to kind of show off your work. It's all, you know, just makers, uh, they're just showing off their stuff and, and chatting about things. So, um, I did a little, uh, molding and casting panel there for super quick. Um, but nothing other than that, you know, things at conventions and, and that with panels, but yeah, for us, it's, I mean, we run our, our shop out of our basement. So having, um, a bunch of people we don't know over to, uh, to run a, a seminar, not only do we just not have the space for it, but it's also our house. Um, we have done classes every once in a while. Um, we did, we've done them a couple times at um, Construct in New York City. Actually, I should talk to Alyssa because I will be there this year in New York City. It's in May. You guys can look it up. Um, maybe this year I do a molding and casting demo. That'd be really fun. But otherwise, uh, we just don't have the space for it uh, to do it now. However, Smooth On does. We love Smooth On. In fact, there's a new Reynolds uh, that Reynolds or Smooth On, one of them owns the other one. But uh, they distribute Smooth On products. And uh, maybe I'll get to do some. I've talked to them about doing classes at their location in Kent, Washington, just south of us. Uh, otherwise, you can go to Smooth On's website. Um, they have a seminars section on the website with a bunch more information about that. And I know that they do specifically do molding and casting demos because I see them on Twitter talking about it all the time. And I'm like, man, I want to go there. And then they're like, it's in Pennsylvania. I'm like, <laughs> um, so there you go. That's that is that. But again, um, Construct Nerdy Views will be there. Uh, he's in the chat. He says it's the last weekend of April this year. It's in New York City. And I will talk to Alyssa about doing a molding and casting demo because that sounds fun. 
Uh, let's see. That question came to us from Christian. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, Nick has a business question. This is good. Both you and your guests now have employees. That's right. I have an employee. I was wondering about the hiring process, uh, if there is any process. Were they simply professional relationships that evolved organically, or was there a type of application? I'm curious how you uh, approached hiring people. Sounds to me you were like, I need warm bodies. Can you mix? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's definitely, for, for us, it's definitely evolved. Um, kind of as we grow and our, our needs change. Um, we started off, you know, like I said, it was, we had a, you know, big projects coming in and we needed people. So I, you know, called up friends who were talented and hardworking and, um, that's, that's how it started. And, you know, so there was no, no process there. Um, but now recently it's, you know, kind of changed over the years as we've grown and kind of needs have changed. Like, um, we recently, uh, brought on, you know, a, fu- a full-time hire um, uh, with us. He's been been with us now two weeks uh, as a 3D modeler, and that was all through just job postings and doing interviews. So mm-hmm. it's definitely changed, but yeah, the way no, I don't think there's a right way. No, we. Um, it's interesting. We c- you want to make sure that the people who are on the team are people who you can stand being around for a long period of time. Um, that's really, really important. Also, the kind of people who will follow through. It doesn't matter if someone's super talented if they never finish any projects. So uh, getting to know people ahead of time um, can can play a huge role in that. Uh, fortunately for us, like the last five to ten years of being in this amazing community of makers – and traveling and meeting people, we know what people are capable of. We know what kind of people they are. So we have this wonderful pool of talent to pull from when it comes to bringing in, um, uh, hiring, uh, hiring new people. Our, our, um, employee page, uh, we hired to do administrative type work. She does post videos. She does social media stuff. She takes care of our email and newsletter. Um, I didn't need a prop maker, or a cosplayer. Now, Paige is a cosplayer because she's part of our community, but that's not why we hired her. Um, she actually ran a convention in Savannah called uh, SwarmCon, and she had invited me as a guest, and that's how I met her. And I was like, wow, you're a young person who ran a convention. You seem like you have your act together. Um, would you be interested in helping us do that type of stuff for our business? And she was like, yes. And I was like, you're in. <laughs> Um, and then we threw a bunch of work at her and she seems to be doing all right. So it's kind of how it is. It's, it's a lot more of an organic thing, at least early on as we start building our team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's but it's nice when you have a, a relationship beforehand. And, yeah. And like you said, kind of get to know someone and, and how they work and how they operate. And it just makes, you know, it, it, it has, you have a, a broader starting point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Nick. Really good question. Uh, let's keep moving forward here. Foundry13 says, was there a specific moment where you decided you wanted to take up prop making as a hobby? So not even as a business. When did you start it as a hobby? Go way back. Um, I actually I have a pretty precise moment. Yeah. Um, yeah so I grew up you know, doing random different creative stuff. And uh, after university, I was... Uh, lost and finding my way um, and at the time I was doing like a lot of model painting and, and some commissions there um, playing a lot of video games and drawing a lot and I was playing a video game uh, that I can't currently remember the name of uh, Firefall that's what it was and they actually uh, sponsored a cosplayer and kind of followed along with, with some builds of hers was that Crystal? Um, it was Crystal yeah yep. uh, Crystal Graziano, and that was the first time I realized that cosplay was a thing that people did, and not just that, you know, not just that companies hired or you know bought or made their own costumes, but that people did it on their own for fun. That that was my first taste and realization of that. So, um, somewhere I gotta find this real quick. Somewhere there's a picture of me with Crystal the first time I met her. When she was dressed up as the character from Firefall. Yes. Okay. 
I'm bringing this up on screen because this is awesome. I didn't know her at the time, but I was so stoked and I totally fanboyed out. Uh, I was in my Hawk costume at PAX. This was in 2012. I was like, oh my God, it's Kristen Graziano. High oh, yeah. five. And I, I, I can't get my picture taken with you. <laughs> and of course, Crystal's a sweetheart yeah. and took pictures. Yeah. It was amazing. And now we're buddies. Don't worry. Yeah, I still did the same thing last year <laughs> when I finally met her. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, we got started, I think 2009 was when we did our first costume. It was uh, uh, Team Fortress 2. And uh, yep. we had a friend who was in anime and doing anime conventions. She was already into that scene, and she kind of goaded us into doing this thing. And when we were making, I made a outfit. I made the rocket launcher from Team Fortress, and that was it. I made a, I made the crappiest rocket launcher. I've seen a lot of people make rocket launchers from from Team Fortress too. Mine is clearly the worst, but I made it, and I was hooked. I was like, yes, what can I make next? And that was that was it. It was all downhill from there. I think that's how it goes, though. I I still have uh, the first prop I ever made sitting above my desk at work. Yeah. Um, and it was uh, an apple of Eden from Assassin's oh, Creed, yeah. so the the gold glowing orb. Um, it was literally like a styrofoam ball, and to flatten or finish it, I literally just used uh, masking tape and then spray painted it gold, <laughs> and then and then hot glued on. Uh, El wire. Nice. So. I no longer have my rocket launcher. I think I gave that away on Twitter, and someone, a stranger, drove to my house, and and he owns it now. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, there are there are photos. Don't worry. Uh, Brittany added a note in here. She's excited about your dogs. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you for the question. Cute, cute puppies running around. Let's see. Fiery Wolf has a foam question. I might know a thing or two about that. Uh, he's tackling his first EVA foam project, and my Placidip is forming an orange peel-like rough texture. Any ideas what could be the problem? You can get that with a lot of spray paints, getting that orange peel effect. And I know from my experience that usually has to do with being in a, in a humid area. That... There's a lot, a lot of factors that could cause that, but usually, if it's if you're in a humid area, you can get that kind of effect. Um, have you ever had any like spray paints or anything like that get all orange peely on you? Oh, way too often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely been through it. But uh, was it was it paint or Plasti Dip? This was Plasti Dip. Okay. Yeah, I know Plasti Dip. In my experience, Bill, you've I'm sure you've used it more than I have, and I haven't for a while, but. It does have a natural texture to it. Yeah. What I've seen um, Kamui cosplay do is is she puts really, really heavy coats of it on. Like, she just drenches it. And that seems to make a slightly smoother surface. But that's one of the reasons why I don't use Plasti Dip very often for sealing foam, is that there's less control over the final texture. It's one of the reasons why I like using... Um, uh, I like using latex rubber. It's a fairly smooth, even surface after you put on a lot of uh, coats. And then you could use like a matte varnish or a gloss varnish to get a different um, shininess. Um, but also, if you're really picky about the surface finish on your foam, you can uh, seal it with like Epsilon, which is an epoxy. It's rigid and you can sand it super smooth and then paint it however you like. So that's one of the downsides of using Plastid Dip. I will say. My foam gauntlets here, I didn't seal at all. This is just, that's just acrylic paint. So I hit it with a heat gun to sort of heat seal the surface and close up the, the sort of pores of the foam. But then I just painted it with acrylic paint. It looks fine. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. It's a, it's a Nazgul gauntlet. Yeah. So how did you do all the, the ridges in that piece of like the... Hand that's, plates and whatnot. That's a good question. Now you can go watch the video, but I'll give you a, a spoiler. So in the back of it, I cut V grooves and then okay. barge them up and pinch them together, and that creates peaks. And then when you unfold it, it makes this sort of scalloped, maybe that's not the right word, but dished profile yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, peaks and valleys. So all the way down the, the edge there, you can see. Yeah. Let your seams do the work for you. Um, I'll definitely 
definitely going to be watching that video right after our call. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, if we can go, if I can stroke my own ego a little bit. I don't know if Adam was being really, just really nice. Um, I don't mind. But he was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm learning so much. And I was like, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe he was just humoring me, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Thank you, Fiery Wolf Cosplay, for the, the question. And good luck with your Plassy Dip. Let's see. Oh, another Plassy Dip uh, question from Ringleader Luna. What brand of spray paint sticks to Plassy Dip? I would like it to stick and not flake off for my Cyborg Ninja Raiden mask. Most paints I've tried stick fairly well to Plassy Dip. Um, I normally just use acrylic paints for most things. That seems to work just fine. Are you guys mostly using acrylic paints, or, or have you leveled up to Vulpin level automotive stuff? <laughs> Not quite there, yeah. uh, but using a lot of automotive stuff now. Uh, we still use, um, I would say, middle ground where we we aren't done. You know, we still use rattle cans here and there. Um, it's kind of where it fits and where it's needed, and depending on timelines and all that stuff. Um, but definitely starting to use a lot more, or we have been, you know, the past probably year or so using a lot more kind of various automotive stuff and, and all those fun, smelly things. Very good. Uh, I apologize if I was really loud, everybody. Apparently I threw the gauntlet and, uh, turned up my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Should be better now. Um, yeah. So ring leader Luna for your plastic dip, I would just use acrylic paint. So you can brush it on, you can spray it on use an airbrush should be fine yeah. i usually don't use enamels because they tend to um not be as flexible as acrylics so just an acrylic paints um now everyone's saying i'm a little i'm a little quiet so i can turn myself back up there we go uh thank you for the question next one is brandon the orc he's got a question about adhesives have you tried the new adhesive called cosbond from zach labs um i have not People seem to like it really, really a lot. Have you heard about this yet, Jordan? I have not heard about it at all. If you give me one second, I have some right there. I'm going to go okay. grab it. All right, one second, everybody. Just going to get the thing. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm just ad admiring the space gun wall. All right. I got some of this stuff. They sent me some. Zach Labs is local. Um... And it's a it's a sheet. Sorry, I hit the microphone. It's a sheet that is a double sided adhesive. So you peel, you can cut it to shape and peel it off of both sides. Boop, they got a whole thing. I haven't tried it yet, um, just because I've been burning the candle at both ends. But uh, it seems pretty cool. Yeah. Is what's what would what's the intended application like? Um, it's like almost like double sided tape. Yeah. Um, Brandon the Ark here says that um, it's comparable to barge contact cement in as far as oh, the okay. strength is concerned. Wow. Um, but I haven't again. I haven't tried it yet. But the what what I what I, gets me thinking is having some of this on you, uh, not peeled. So so an unused piece of this on you in a pocket. When you're on the floor of a convention, if part of your costume breaks, instead of having to get glue out, you can just stick it to back to, to stick two things back together with something like this. That seems like a really good yeah. use case. Yeah, um, and you can cut it to any shape, so you don't you're not stuck with just a thin strip of tape or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, Core Geek is in the chat. He says it's more permanent. It's very permanent bond, which is really cool. Uh, but again, I haven't tried it yet. I have some sitting right there. <laughs> I promise I'll try it out, but I haven't yet. Okay. Um, and the we'll have links to that uh, Zach Labs uh, in the chat, ZachLabs.com. If you guys want to go check that out for yourselves. Let's keep moving here. No Spaceship says he purchased the Henchman Studios McCree belt buckle that was cold cast. Um, what was it? Oh, and it was rubbing against his armor, his 3D printed McCree armor. And it mm. seems like it has worn through or chipped through some of the cold cast finish and wondering if there's something you could do to repair it. That is tricky. It is. Um, just with the nature of cold casting, it's a thin layer um, that the casting powder is in. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, he, I will say that he um, says he has since put padding on the armor where it was intersecting um, to keep it from scratching, which is good. Yeah. Something to think about if you have any cold cast pieces on your costume. Um, any interference parts like that, you want to make sure you pad them in some way so they don't scratch. I had a, I have a cold cast Skyrim steel axe that I got from uh, Vulpen props and it's aluminum and it looks incredible but i brought it to a convention they almost didn't let me in because it (laughs) looks real it looks so legit but the whole time i was just terrified of letting it get scratched so i don't that doesn't leave the house anymore (laughs) yeah in terms of you know not a lot of options at that point what you know when something doesn't stretch as as you point out um but some things you can potentially try are to subtly, you know, fix is if you can find a close paint that matches, whether it's a spray paint or something, and, and use either a small sponge or a Q-tip to even dab on some color into those areas. It might it might not be a perfect color match, but it help might help hide and blend it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I um but, I was doing some cold cast stuff earlier today, and there was a bubble, like a tiny little bubble, huh. and I I sort of dremeled it out carefully. And then I mixed a bunch of brass powder in with some super glue and Mm. filled the bubble. Now, you can't sand it smooth. Like, you can't ferret perfectly. So, there's always going to be a little seam where the glue went in there. But it filled the bubble. So, there's a little... It's noticeable that there's something wrong there, but it's not not a missing spot. Um, That wouldn't really work. You could maybe mix up some super glue and your brass powder and, like, brush a little bit of it on. But there's going to be a protrusion Texture. there. Yeah. But I, I, I will say that the super glue brass mixture can be polished nice and shiny. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess I'm curious if there's a you know, a, another possible medium that you could do that with that might settle a little more yeah. than super glue would. I wonder if maybe you can mix up a little bit of um, epoxy putty, like um, epoxy sculpt or yeah. something. Mix it up, mix up a little bit of it, and um, uh, mix in a lot of metal powder. You got it, it has to be a, a lot of the metal powder because um, you, when you buff it, you have to make sure the surface is totally full of metal powder. But I wonder if you can mix in a bunch of that metal powder and then sculpt in that spot. Like if you, the part that's kind of worn off, you could maybe dremel that out a little bit, sculpt that in, and then you can fare the the um, epoxy putty with water and smooth it out and then maybe buff it after that. This is all theoretical. Yeah. <laughs> Exploring and problem solving. Yeah. A uh, habit to your workshop in the chat is, is recommending doing something similar, but just using your resin, just use urethane resin, mix in a lot of powder. Um, it's worth trying. Um, maybe try it on something else before you yep. commit to the final piece. Um, but it is possible. So good luck to you. Um, no spaceship. Actually, he sent a picture of his McCree costume. So I want to bring that up on screen because it looked really cool. There you go. No spaceship at Katsukon. And that is a really crazy, awesome looking McCree right there with a whole bunch of really cool armor. Oh, that is awesome. And a really dope looking belt buckle. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks for sharing and good luck on the repair. Let's see. Classy Carp is curious about airbrush paints. Do you have any experience trying to uh, dilute the heavy body acrylic paint? So we like using Liquitex heavy body paints. Um, Do you think it's possible if you use an airbrush medium to thin them? I tend to get airbrush paints for my airbrush and heavy body paints for hand brushing. How about you? Do you have a favorite airbrush paint? Uh, We use a lot of Createx. Mm Mm-hmm. So their their wicked color line, uh, sorry, the wicked colors line in particular, but but I would agree, um, you could probably thin the heavy body stuff down enough, but it might not be recommended or the best option. Um, but you, you still could. You could. Um, the point of the heavy body stuff though is to have it be super super pigment heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, so you may be kind of missing out on the the benefit you would get from using those paints. Um, I I also like the Createx, Createx paints. I've got the um, the uh, Wicked Color stuff up here. They have 
uh, fluorescent and pearlized colors. They've got reducers and stuff. Um, just their normal airbrush colors. The uh, they have opaque and, and I'm sorry, they have opaque and transparent yep. colors. The transparent ones are really fun to play with if you want to get some cool layered effects. Um, so Gradients yeah. and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I tend to like I I'll use Tamiya and I'll usually thin that with a little bit of alcohol. Tamiya all clad um, uh, the Createx airbrush paints. I tend to use in the airbrush, and then other stuff I use with a paintbrush. This my gauntlets that I made. Uh, we're all done with the heavy body paints and a paintbrush. And you can't see any brush strokes. I did uh, three layers of paint and took my time. And it looks uh, nice and nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. Do you have a favorite, uh, like, brushing paint? Um, we use a brand. Probably the brand we use most, actually, is... is the name of the brand is Golden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we like their stuff. They actually have, I think our favorite paint from them too is they have a amazing bronze mm -hmm. that goes on very nicely. Um, we actually use it for gold a lot because it, it, it reads very gold, but has almost a darker, um, shade to it. So that, that we use a lot and it's again, being able to brush it on and, you know, have two coats, to get you know full coverage on gold is you know very nicely or or even one if we're weathering something is right um is that would that be their heavy body paints i don't believe so all right um i you're the second person today to tell me that they like golden paint so i'm like all right i'll try them out <laughs> yeah. Um, a buddy of mine had a t-shirt. I think he like went to, if they have a store or something, he went there. Or maybe you can get these on their website. He had a t-shirt that was color swatches of their paints. And it was white, a bunch of white squares with um, dabs of actual paint on the t-shirt. Which is really, if you can get a color yeah. sheet, I have one for the Nova um, acrylic paints. If you can get a sheet with the actual colors on them... A lot of times you can buy these for from from paint companies. That way, if you're ordering paint, you can look at this sheet in whatever light you have and tell what it's going to look like because the your computer screen lies, like yeah. not accurate. Um, if you get a T-shirt, that'd be even better. I'm looking at the Golden <laughs> website. I'm like, hey, can I get a T-shirt? <laughs> that way, it's always on you. I know. Which color do I need? Uh, <laughs> that bronze looks really good. <laughs> Um, I'll have to dig around. I kind of, I forgot about that shirt. I really want one. <laughs> That's my one of my art professors from college had that. Uh, thank you, Classy Carp, for the question. I'm sure somewhere in there we answered your question. Sam has a question. Uh, have you ever tried using a hot wire cutter for EVA foam? Uh, <clears throat> I I have not. Have you ever used one of those for cutting like um like styrofoam? Yeah, we used it for styrofoam and expanded polystyrene, but mm -hmm. never for EVA. Right. Um, my thought is, all, I mean, I love my bandsaw. I have three bandsaws, and that does the trick. <laughs> so I just use that, and it leaves a very nice, very clean cut. Um, I'm not saying that a hot wire cutter won't work, but I have a guess that the cut surface is not going to be super smooth and clean. Just guessing. Also toxic. Also, it's melting EVA foam. So, so if you have three bandsaws, is there one that is your primary one? The other two are collected dust, or do you use no. all three? I use all three. I have Job really? of the Cut. My big green one is Job of the Cut. It's got okay. a, a like a five TPI wood cutting blade on it. So if I'm cutting wood or um, big things, just just removing material, I use that. It also has a fourteen inch throat, so I can cut bigger things on it. My smaller one. Uh, is a nine inch bandsaw and it has a metal cutting blade on it. So if I'm cutting aluminum or if I'm cutting foam, I'll actually use the metal cutting uh, blade because it's not as rough. It makes a really nice mm -hmm. cut. And then I have a horizontal metal cutting bandsaw that is really good. You can, it's got a clamp so you can clamp in like a bar of metal 
and then leave it running in it. The gravity pulls the blade through it. Oh, wow. For making perfect 90 degree cuts. Um, it's technically a metal cutting bandsaw, but it'll cut anything you put in it. So <laughs> it's pretty handy. I don't use that one very often, but when I need to use it, it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. I know I'm I know I'm spoiled before anyone in the chat yells at me. I know I'm very spoiled, but if you can get a third bandsaw then I say go for it. <laughs> Old or odd man, odd man out props says his bandsaw is named Ryobi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> oh gosh, that's that's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, thank you for the question, Sam. Uh, Corium Nine has a question. He says, "I was watching last time Henchman Studios was on the Q and A. He's curious if Jordan ever got a critter gun. Oh, did you ever pick one of those up?" I did, and I have since broken it. Oh, no. Uh, How'd you break so, it? Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly how it happened. I don't remember, or um, I wasn't there. But basically, the, the metal tube that inserts into your mason jar that you screw on, that broke off. Oh. Um, so it no longer pulls paint. And uh, I've been meaning to get a, a replacement, either look at it for a replacement part or... Uh, did a new one, but I really, we've been, we have a bunch of, um, HVLP guns now and a bunch of like, uh, kind of mid-size touch up guns as well. So between that, it's really haven't had the need, yeah, I guess, lately. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the critter gun is awesome for, uh, like, so I'll use it for latex, but I'll also throw yeah. paint through it. If I just need to like shotgun a lot of paint. And I don't want to thin it because the nozzle on that thing is like, it's like that big. Yeah. So if you just need a ton of paint to go in that direction, um, you can totally use that. But I've used it less and less now. I more mostly just use it for latex, and I have my airbrushes and a small detail gun for doing paint. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're not spraying latex, you probably don't have a good reason to use it. But I like latex, so I use mine. Yeah. Uh, do you have a, a metal lathe, I wonder? We don't. Oh. Um, no, we don't have a lathe at all. Oh, is, I, I was going to say, you could just make a new, that tube, it would be super easy to make. Yeah, no, that's been um, something that has always been something over for the past couple of years that I've had in the back of my mind. Um, but we have the, the you know, on, on one hand, limited space, um, even with our shop space. Um, and then also we have, uh, a couple of shop neighbors who have one has a metal lathe and oh. one has a, one that they use for wood. So nice. if the need, what if and when the need arises, we can always uh, poke them and call in a favor. So yeah. it's allowed us to put off getting one ourselves. <laughs> I bet you could three D print that part. It probably wouldn't be super durable, but just print like five of them, and if it breaks again, you just throw it away. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Corium Nine also wants to know if you have a hidden talent. Hmm. He likes to ask this question. So, for example, I can juggle. I have juggling balls right here. That's my hidden talent. I want to see this. Oh, all right. Well, I'm going to juggle. I've... You think about uh, what your hidden talent is. I have to try and do this without uh, well, see people getting now. in the way. Oh, oh, oh. I can do better. Hold on. Oops. There we go. Oh, that's it. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, what's your hidden talent? Ah, I don't know. I feel like for most of my life, the, the creative side of things was my hidden talent. Yeah. <laughs> so. What's my uh, hidden talent? I'm good at making props. That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, uh, I guess, I guess maybe not something that I would say is a hidden talent, but something that uh, outside of prop making that I've developed a, an interest and passion for is, is, um, is what, you know, in general content creation, but video editing yeah. and, and shooting video, um, as well as photos. I've, I've had a lot of fun in the past few months doing more and more of that. And it's been a lot of fun to learn and, and kind of research. So what do you, what do, uh, camera are you shooting with these days? Uh, we have a Sony A7S II. Mm -hmm. um, so we got some sweet 4K video now. Yeah, very cool. 
Um, I've been at, that's obviously I make a lot of videos, uh, but I've been yeah. having a lot of fun with that lately, and uh, always looking for fun ways to spruce up our videos. Always looking yes. for an excuse to buy another lens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So we actually funny funny note. Um, we have. Uh, a, a new guy um, who's been doing a lot of video editing for us the past couple of weeks, uh, Jamar, and he's awesome. And if you watch our last two videos that are have been out the past two weeks and, and this next one we'll put out Monday, uh, he edited those and they've been awesome. Um, but to you know, he doesn't necessarily come from the cosplay industry or, or side of things. So to get him to you know, in, in the loop of what we're going for, the kinds of videos for, we we gave him your channel and tested <laughs> uh, as things to dive into and watch. Tested's a pretty good one um, to to follow. Uh, having been part of their production now too, and I've I've worked with them for the last five years, and and I know everyone on the team. Um, it's really cool to see how things operate behind the scenes. They have um, a full time producer on site uh gunther who's awesome really nice guy uh so he films most of the things um joey famelli who is amazing um he he doesn't live there anymore he moved to la but he does a lot of the editing as well he's been filming stuff for um uh, Drew Scanlon as well, but Joey's a wizard and again super super nice. He has his own channel, so whenever he posts a new video talking about, like he posted a video talking about keyboard shortcuts for Adobe Premiere, and I was like, okay. I took notes. So I was like, yes, <laughs> I'd learned stuff. I've been editing for years and years now, and I learned more stuff every time I could could dive into that. Um, but it's really cool to see how that their machine works because. Everyone edits, like Norm edits, Gunther edits, Joey edits, because they they film an astonishing amount of content. Just yes, it's crazy. Hours of footage. The the one day build video was thirty five minutes long, I think, but they probably filmed three hours of footage on two cameras. Could you imagine cutting that down? Yeah, that's wild. We we basically like even now it's like we film as little as we can just so we have less to go through <laughs> in the edit. Uh yeah. I'll tell you what, when I get an editor, I'm gonna film like crazy. I'll be like, Psh, I don't care. I don't have to watch any of this. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. someone else's problem. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We got a couple more here. Thanks, Corey M9. Good question. Uh, Buckaroo is curious about 3D printing. He's been working with PLA. He says, have you ever printed armor parts thin to save time and then reinforce them with fiberglass so you strengthen them and possibly to keep them from heat warping? That sounds pretty clever. Um, we've done similar stuff. Have, uh, do you have a, a workflow? Do you usually mold and cast your printed parts? Uh, we actually have been doing a ton of that lately. Um, now, you you won't get to see it for a while, Um but but depending on the parts and, and still combination of we're doing a lot of molding and casting always, um, but yeah so we've actually been doing a lot of that you know printing PLA um, for something like armor you know a lot of our walls are basically solid um, 2.4 to you know 3.2 mil thick and then we'll yeah go in and, and fiberglass reinforce it and we've stress tested the heck out of those parts yeah and drop them from you know a, you know from our upper story of our wow. shop and like it's been it's been you know very reliable for us so far so we're excited about it and, and you know just as another tool or another option for doing things it, it definitely has been good but but the one big concern that that he mentioned in the question um is you have to make sure your prints aren't hollow um because then you you can still get punctures and different things happening to that. So so you're printing them at 100 percent infill. Um, not necessarily. Uh, it depends because we'll we'll usually with our prints we'll um, basically hollow them out so they're a shell. Yeah. Uh, and then and then our walls are are you know between 2.4 and 3.2 mil thick on the model, and then we have a you know with our ultimators we throw a 0.8 nozzle on there, and you know do have the print the wall setting at 1.6 mil but when you have that on either side of the wall it ends up filling the part yeah the way through so that's really good um we did something similar when Brittany made the uh commander holly helmet that was i believe was all pla 
and uh, printed in multiple pieces. And it looks like she printed it pretty much solid, uh, glued it together, and then fiberglass the inside of it. Um, mm-hmm. And that seemed, it felt, we did not drop it off of anything, but it seemed like it was pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. We did the same thing for the Reinhardt helmet, and that, that seemed pretty good, too. Um, yeah. I will say, yeah. careful leaving it in a really hot car. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm-hmm. PLA likes to melt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Good question. Lots of great questions today. We got one more, or two more. Uh, cause Brittany added one <laughs> diesel says, uh, what are the, or are there any recent techniques or products that you've recently discovered that make you go, what is this devil magic? How did I not know about this before? I have a good one. Okay. There, I have lots of these rulers, these see-through rulers that are awesome, right? But what happens is I will use them with an X-Acto knife and just carve the crap out of the edge. They get ruined. They make these with a piece of metal in the edge to use as a straight edge. Okay. I didn't know that until I was at Adam Savage's shop. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so I bought a bunch of them. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff I bought after visiting his shop. I feel like it's a constant process of learning new and exciting things. And then finding ways to incorporate them into your workflow. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I guess the one thing that pops to mind isn't necessarily a uh, tool or material, but a technique. Um, and this just from, you know, and, and it can be a simple thing where it's like someone just says a sentence and it changes your life in terms of how you <laughs> how you do something. Uh, in this example, so one of our awesome builders, uh, Maddie, um, he goes by on Instagram, Zombie Meat Studio. Uh, so definitely check him out. He he's done a lot of film stuff. He's worked on some crazy sets and and projects in his time. Actually, he worked on um, the big Gormagala at Frank's shop. Yeah, uh, a couple of years ago. Awesome. Um, so and, and it was just the tip he gave was just in regards to masking and taping, um, just to prevent, um, I you know any ta- or paint peeling as you're going. Is just to de- detach all the tape by, you know, regular painter's tape by just like putting it on your pants, like ripping yeah. a strip, putting it on your pants, then peeling it off, putting it down. Uh, it, it still has, you know, stayed well and sticks well, but then like it has cut down, you know, our, our, you know, paint peeling issues from like whatever small percentage it was to zero, which is great. That's awesome. It's funny too. I, I first saw that technique when I was working on the Lawbreakers costumes and frank okay. shop yeah <laughs> people were taking strips of paint and like sticking it to their chest i'm like yep. what are you doing and they're like oh we're not waiting for this paint to dry so this will keep it from peeling off i was like yep. right yep. And, and actually if you see it so we just put a video out a couple weeks ago um and i was painting uh, a destiny helmet and i used that for it and and exactly that it let the workflow be 10 times faster because i was you know laying on paint, hitting it with a heat gun to make it uh, kick fast, and then immediately putting tape on and, and no issues. <laughs> That's awesome. It's mind-blowing. That is really cool. Uh, thank you, Diesel, for the question. Uh, Brittany snuck one more question in here. She's <laughs> curious what happens to all of your old molds because you made a, a specifically a giant mold for the Warframe suit, a body-sized mold. What happens mm. to all that, that expensive silicone? Um. It depends. We definitely go through a lot. And actually, when we, we got a set in space um, next to our initial shop, we, we took over another one next door. Um, and when we did that, we had a storage unit that we took everything out of. And, and in that process, we threw out a lot of stuff, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to keep a good chunk of old molds just for filler. Yeah, you cut but, them up and throw them into your molds. Yeah, but unfortunately, it it was so hard for me to go through. And our team will attest. I was breaking down. I was like, I don't want to throw this out. One day, I want to cast this for myself. Yeah. So so we'll keep it. But at a point, there's just this is never going to be used again. Um, and you just have to have to. It's heartbreaking, but you have to part with them sometimes. Yeah, um, we're because you're you're paying for the storage space. So mm-hmm. we are. Um currently shop shopping quick update everybody we don't have a shop to move into yet (laughs) but we're working on it 
And I know that day is going to come when we move. I have all this sort of stuff that over the last five years in this basement, we just let it accrue. Um, and I'm like, it's fine. I'll totally use that someday. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I won't. <laughs> I'm lying yep. to myself. When we move, I'm going to have to make some hard decisions and be like, Bill, be honest with yourself. You're never using this again. Throw it away. Yeah. So molds either become filler for new molds yeah. or – It's the great circle even, of life. Yeah, a lot of molds will use if – if it's like a big flat one, we'll use the back of it for – Either mixing Bondo on yeah. or body filler or, uh, you know, when we mix up super glue and baby powder. So they'll become palettes and for different things sometimes. But There you go. Get the most, out, I mean, the most out of it. But sometimes things just get thrown away. Um, hey, that is the end of the questions. And Prop Tarts, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for bringing so many great questions. Uh, Jordan, thank you so much for hanging out with us for the last thank hour. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. It has been great uh, getting to catch up with you. I think the last time we hung out was at BlizzCon, which was awesome. Um, I don't know what's next. What's, what is next? What's next for you? Do you well, are you traveling? We'll be at – or some of our team will be at PAX East. Oh, cool. Um, so if you happen to be there again, that would be awesome. There are some things perhaps that people will see okay. there that you have made, I imagine? Yes. Awesome. And if folks are following Henchman Studios on all the social media places, they will get notified when those things become made public, I presume. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, very yeah, good. We're definitely, definitely uh, always, you know, that's the fun thing, fun challenges. We have, you know, when we worked on a project, we'll have six months of posting old content until the new thing comes out. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see when that happens. Uh, the, the folks at home seem pretty stoked too. Uh, so yeah, very good. Thank you so much for hanging out. That'll do it for this, uh, week worth of, uh, questions. And I do believe we will be back in next week. So we'll see Sounds you great. all then. Bye everybody. Thank you.